is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zanker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And on this show, I'm looking for people who are going to help you to work smarter. Because at the end of the day, that's what time management is about and taking back your time. It's how can you really work smarter so that you don't have to work harder, right? Working less and achieving more, so creating more impact. So Wendy Weiss is here with me today, and I'm super excited. She is the queen of cold calling. She is an author, a speaker, a sales trainer, and sales coach. And she's recognized as one of the leading authorities on lead generation, cold calling, and new business development. And that's why she's here, because you guys need this. And her clients include Avon, ADP, Sprint, and thousands of entrepreneurs throughout the world. Wendy's been featured in the New York Times, Business Week, Entrepreneur Magazine, Selling Power, Inc., Forbes, various other business and sales publications. And she's the author of Cold Calling for Women, Opening Doors and Closing Sales and the Sales Winner's Handbook, Essential Scripts and Strategies to Skyrocket Sales Performance. So without further ado, Wendy, hey, welcome to the show. Hey, Penny. Thanks for having me. Sure. So it's a big thing for people to get more leads and close more sales. I mean, at the end of the day, if they're not doing that and their business isn't growing, it's what? Not a business. Dying, right? Dying, yeah. yeah. Not a business, right? So what makes you passionate about sales? Well, it's it's funny because I was never actually supposed to be the queen of cold calling. I was actually supposed to be a ballerina. Well, there's a far difference. (laughs) Absolutely. I grew up in Pittsburgh and I moved to New York City where I still live and work. And I moved here when I was a teenager to dance. And I studied at the Joffrey Ballet School. And then eventually, like every artist in New York City, I needed a day job and got tired of waiting on tables. So I got a job with a telemarketing agency that did business development, and it turned out I was good at it, which was a complete surprise because ballet dancers don't talk. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I mean, in cold calling, I mean, people dread cold calling, like, oh, my God, I have to call this list of people that I don't know, and I don't know what to say or how to say it. It's certainly not on the top of most people's list to think that would be fun. (laughs) Absolutely. And here's the thing. As I said, I got into this by accident. You asked me what I'm passionate about. I know that this is something that is really hard for a lot of people. Mm. And it's something that a lot of people find to be really scary. And here's the thing. The conversation about this topic is often so stupid. And people say such ridiculous things about it. Like what? Oh, like it's about going through the nose and the hangups until somebody says yes to you. Who wants to do that? That's completely right. insane. Right. That's not no. very motivating. That no. just makes me think like, I know they say it's a numbers game, but that doesn't make it any more interesting and exciting to do no, that. No, not at all. Or they say prospecting sucks, so get over it. And I mean, who wants to well, do that? <laughs> you know, a very macho stance. And what if it didn't suck? You know, what if it was just a business process, something that you do to get more business? What if it wasn't a whole big emotional thing? And right. What if it didn't suck? So how do you make it fun? Tell us a tip or trick on how to shift that mindset away from eh, to yay. Well, I don't know that they have to be yay. I think the idea is to get to neutral. Because if you're neutral, then you can do what you need to do. We're going to take the emotion out of it. I actually had somebody that went through one of my classes. We do a program called 3X Appointments, and we call it 3X because people routinely triple their numbers. Uh And so she did the program, and she told me after the program ended that it actually helped her talk to her teenage son. Because part of the program was we help people just take the emotion out of it. You might be sending an email, 
and the person you're sending it to might delete it. But nobody has a nervous breakdown about that. And by the same token, if you know what you are doing, this is a skill. This is a communication skill. Yes, it is. When you learn this skill, people just open up their calendars and book an appointment. Right. But it's a skill. So it's like any skill. You have to practice and work it, and then you get better at it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And I'll share what I learned in ballet class because everything I know in life, I learned in ballet class. And what I learned in ballet class was warm up, rehearse, perform. That's what I learned in ballet class. The problem is most people just jump to the performance. They just get on the phone and wing it. Yeah, absolutely. Why, Why is it that people don't like to step back and warm up and practice? I don't know. I, I do not have an answer right? because, for that I mean, one. It's very common, like you said, and that's not in just cold calling. It's across the board as people just dive in and really to maximize our results, that little bit of planning and practice up front makes a huge difference. Absolutely. And there is a myth having to do with sales. There's the myth of the born salesperson, that somehow okay. there are these people out there, they're just born knowing what to do and what to say. And that's a myth. Right. I was really lucky because when I got that day job all these years ago, they taught me this skill. They coached me. They held my hand and they said, no, don't do that. Do this. And learning the skill enabled me to build a business. People may be born with a lot of athletic talent. That doesn't mean they make it to the Olympics. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you want to share with us some of the the do's and don'ts of the warm up and practice or of the performance side? Absolutely. If you're a dancer, first thing you have to do before class or rehearsal or performance is you have to warm up. You have to get set up so that you can do what you need to do. And so you do not hurt yourself. Right. So the warm up for cold calling, so you don't hurt yourself, is it starts with a really micro-targeted profile of an ideal prospect. Who is it you're looking for? Because when you know the profile of the type of prospect, the type of lead that is a great lead for you in your mm-hmm. market with whatever it is you're doing, when you know that profile, it's easier to find them. It's easier to create messaging that's going to resonate. They're more likely to close because they're like appropriate leads and you don't waste your time. So we always start with what's the target. And then the other- I just want to highlight for a second for people who are listening is that's across the board with marketing. Like if you don't know who you're targeting, so I think that it's super critical for cold calling and, and anything in the sales side because you can't get the right messaging if you don't know who you're talking to, right? So that is- crazy how many people skip that. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It's crazy. Because the answer to what's a great lead for me in my market is not like everybody. Right. It's it's really specific. How do you help people with that? Because maybe that's where people fall down is they go, you know, everybody, I'm a coach. And so therefore I can coach anybody. Or do you have a process where you kind of help people to get a question that you might ask to help them get clear on who it is that's a best fit for them? Sure. And we actually start with the concrete objective criteria. So we're looking at how large is the company, either revenue or employee count? Does it have to be in a specific geographic location? What's the title of the person that's going to hire you? Is it a specific industry? And what people like to do is they like these subjective criteria. Oh, well, I'm looking for people that understand the value that we have to offer. You right. know, aren't we all? In, yeah, wouldn't you like to be the list broker with that list? Right. You know, so we start with very concrete objective parameters. And typically when people are in our 3X appointments program, I have to rein them in a little bit. They'll say they're looking for companies with 10 to 10,000 employees and we got to narrow that a little bit right. first. The rule is what you say has to be relevant to the person you plan on saying it to. So it starts by choosing. And what I love about this and what is so powerful is you get to choose. Yeah. You know, so many businesses, they're just reactive. Like Absolutely. whoever comes in the door, that's who I'm going to work with. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then they're not getting their ideal customer. One of the things I like to say to people when they're trying to figure out who that is, is, you know, if you've been in business at least for a year or a couple of years and you have some clients, pick one client that you love to work with. What are some of the characteristics about why you love to work with them? You know, is it because of the size of the company? Is it, you know, what is their role and so forth so that it can help them to, if they're not sure, it gives them something to work from. And then of course- There's the not list, right? Is sometimes people don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want. So sometimes you work with, okay, list the things that you don't want. (laughs) And that helps you find better what you do want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because once you know who you're looking for, then you can start to create that message that's going to resonate. When you get them on the phone, you need to have something compelling to say. Give them a voicemail. You have to have something compelling to say so that they will return your phone call because people actually still do that. It's going to send them an email. Better have something compelling to say so they hit reply. Absolutely. And I would guess that this is just as applicable if you were connecting with someone on LinkedIn as well, right? Absolutely. Because I get a lot of, this is sort of a pet peeve of mine. Like you said, have something relevant and make them want to respond back. I see a lot of non-compelling messages where I'm like, hello, it's the point of LinkedIn isn't to be linked to everyone. It's to be linked to people that make sense, right? So when they say, hey, your profile looks interesting, let's connect. Like maybe we can pick something like that apart and give people some better strategies because that doesn't work for me. Like I'm not going to hit accept for somebody like that. Yeah, there's got to be some kind of engagement. I noticed you were doing this, that, and the other thing, which is so interesting to me because, Mm -hmm. and that's why I'd like to connect. Right. Or we know all these people in common and because they're doing this and I'm doing that, and this is why, and there's got to be some reason there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what about the rehearse? So I'm I'm looking at, right, I have to look at it. I know it's only three things, but uh, the warm up, the rehearsal and the performance. So any do's and don'ts in that rehearsal piece to hone the skill? Yeah, what we're going for here, you know, if you're a ballet dancer and you've got a concert coming up, you've been rehearsing for months. You're not just running out there on stage and dancing. And if you're training as a ballet dancer, you take class every single day. And you repeat the same movements over and over and over and over again every single day. But what happens when you do that, you get muscle memory. Mm. It's automatic. You don't have to think about, you know, do I have to point my feet, (laughs) you know, or how do I do this step or what comes next? Because you've just done it so many times, you stop thinking. You just are. You're just being. And so we want to do the same thing we need to practice. So once you've created the messaging, and I'm going to use the word that everybody hates, you need a script. But a script is not, hello, sir or madam, may I have a moment of your time. That's not a script. A script is you're prepared. You know what you're going to say. You know how you're going to introduce yourself. And, you know, I'm going to say something really controversial. Everyone uses scripts. Every single sales professional in the entire world uses scripts. And what I mean is, you probably got an elevator speech. You probably got questions that you get asked all the time and you have an answer. There are probably objections you hear all the time and you have a response. It may not be written down, but if you're saying the same thing over and over again, that is the script. Right. So people get very hung up on this word script. The question is not, should I use the script? The question is, when I use this script, what happens and does it work? Does it work? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing in my head is does it work? Does it work? Right. And I would argue that if people are hanging up on you, it doesn't work. You need a better script. You know, one of the things that I like in the rehearsal, and I don't know if you did this in dancing, but you probably, right, you've got a mirror there so you can see yourself or you've got an instructor who's giving you feedback. Yeah. I think that a lot of times people don't go that extra mile to make sure that they're getting feedback and that they're testing it or even listen, record and listen to themselves, right? Because those are huge things to be, I mean, God, when I first listen to myself and I have other people do that sometimes, they're like, oh my God, is that what I sound like? It's like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) yeah. It's shocking, but it's important to hear what other people are hearing. 
Absolutely. And in our program, we practice with people. And also sometimes they give us recordings. They'll record and send it in so we can listen to them and then we can listen to it together because it's really, really important. And when you practice, you just want that automatic muscle memory so that you can say what you have to say if the prospect has a question or they have an objection or you're speaking with the gatekeeper or whatever it is. You're not thinking, ah, what comes next? You just say what you have to say. It just makes it a lot less stressful. Like you said, it's neutral, right? Because it takes yeah. out the emotion when you already know how you're going to respond. Yeah. And you don't have to think about it. And that's when it really works. And that's when you get on the phone. And it doesn't take years. It, you can learn to do this in a matter of months. We, our 3X appointments program is three months. Right. You Perfect. can learn to do this in three months. It takes 10 years to train a ballet dancer. It's not going to take you 10 years. Right, right. Three months. You can Well, and it. even then, you have to have certain, I guess, things that work for you to be a ballet dancer. Yeah, well, even once you're dancing professionally, you keep taking class every single day. I still take class and I'm not dancing professionally, you know? And I think that's a really good point is it doesn't matter where you are in your sales career and in your sales experience or anything is we we're constantly looking for that training and new ways to get better and new ways to practice and things like that. So I think that is really, really important to stay on your game. Absolutely. Any other sort of key points that you wanted to share for today's show with our audience? Since the name of this show is Take Back Time, I thought that I would share my number one time management strategy. Definitely. I was also going to ask you, and you can see if this fits in the same, is do you have a shortcut, something that you do that shortcuts to your success? Um, okay, I'll answer. Make them two question. separate things or one thing? They're kind of two separate things. Okay. But the time management strategy is follow the money. That everyone's really busy. You've got a lot of stuff on your plate if you're a business owner. And when you look at your to-do list, all the things you need to do, you say to yourself, what is closest to me getting paid? Do that first. Yeah. And I would argue- the low-hanging fruit. Yeah. I would argue selling something to somebody is right there up on the top. And then prospecting, putting opportunities into your pipeline would be number two. So that's what we always want to do. We want to just follow the money because so many business owners or even, you know, sales reps get hung up on the day to day. Well, oh, I have to go do this filing or I have to, you know, right. do this paperwork and leave it to later, go sell something. Absolutely. Um, and I want to highlight for people who are listening that you said prospecting second. I'm a firm believer in that too. And that's something that a lot of people get caught up in over prospecting and not enough selling and converting, like focusing on the conversion part of the process that they're focused on the prospecting or having the conversation, but not optimizing that conversation to close it, to create that appointment, like you said, or to take it to the next level. Absolutely. And perhaps I should share my definition of the word prospecting, because to me, prospecting is you get an appointment. Right. Okay. It's not all this stuff leading up to it and then you stop. Right. It's that you get an appointment and the more efficient, effective and efficient you are at doing that, that really leverages your time. Oh my God. It's everything. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, that appointment is more likely to turn into a sale than a lead, right? Yeah. A lead is a name and right. their contact information. Right. So we want more appointments because that's going to filter through the entire funnel. The more appointments right. we have by sheer numbers, the more sales we're going to have. And then when you focus on that next conversion point, then you're going to be able to tweak two spots in that sales process. Absolutely. And if you do the prospecting piece right, then uh, it's more likely that opportunity is going to close. Absolutely. So what's your shortcut then? Shortcut. Well, there's a few things. Um, lots of times business owners will say, oh, either I don't want to or I just don't have the time. 
Mm. Um, but the idea is not necessarily that you as the business owner have to be the one on the phone. But the mistake that so many business owners make is they, uh, they say, oh, I'm going to hire a salesperson. I say, great. What do you have in place for them? And usually the answer is nothing. Cricket, so, right? <laughs> yeah. so if you have a process, a, a step-by-step benchmarked process so that you know what the numbers are, this is what we teach in our program, you can plug somebody else into it because you know what works. Absolutely. And I like that you said a benchmarked process. Yeah. So tell us what you mean by that so people are 100% clear. Sure. Well, one of the myths about cold calling is you're going to open up the phone book and you're just going to call anybody and you just keep calling them with your fingers crossed. And instead, what you <laughs> what you want to do, because that never worked. For, I mean, 20 years ago, maybe that worked. Not well, but it certainly doesn't work today. So what we want to do today is have a step-by-step process. How many times are you going to reach out to any one prospect. The research shows that it takes somewhere between eight to 12 touches to get someone to respond. So we usually start with eight. We do four voicemails and four emails, Mm -hmm. but then we track it and see if the response is not high enough. Maybe we need more voicemails and emails. Maybe we need to add something else, texting or something on social media, or maybe we're going to send them a letter. But we know because the research tells us eight to 12 touches. So we know it's more than one. So you put that process in place and that includes scripts. It includes a script for when you get somebody on the phone, what are you gonna say? It includes scripts for voicemails. It includes email templates. That's the process. And you track it and you measure it. And if you're getting the response that is a good response for you, then you can plug somebody else into it. That's how it works. Right. And you tweak it and you refine it and you make it so that you're converting more and more in each of those processes. Exactly. Right? You know, so it, what most people do is they just keep changing things. Oh, maybe right. I'll try this. Right. And when you do that, you don't actually know what works. Right. Because it's funny. And my background, I come from a creative background. I was a ballet dancer. My first job was I danced in a ballet company. But this is not actually a creative process. It's a business process. And so it's not about expressing yourself. It's about getting appointments. Right. Well, it can be about expressing yourself if that helps you to get appointments, right? But uh, yeah. but, but it's, it's testing uh, to see what works. And it, Exactly. And I'm not saying that it can't be. I think it's fun. But the rest of you don't have to think it's fun. It's a business process. Right. Well... You know, when you say fun, and we were talking about that at the beginning, it made me think of um, Chet Holmes. I used to work with uh, Chet Holmes and, and Tony Robbins. And one thing Chet used to do when he was doing cold call calling is he would make up different voices when he would call to make it fun for himself. So he'd be like a Texan. And they'd go, howdy, partner. And he'd like, he'd have fun with it. And people like that. Like they had fun back with him and they were more responsive. So, you know, bring your, bring your personality to it as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with the audience? And I know you have a free gift, but before we go to that, is there anything else that you wanted to leave them that we didn't cover yet? Sure. Um, We should mention use the right tools because, you know, 20 years ago, people were answering their phone. It was pretty easy. You call them, they answer their phones. So today, this is what I hear all the time. Nobody answers their phones. That's not exactly true. Some people answer their phones and we can get some of them to call us back. It is harder than it was 20 years ago to get someone on the phone. That said, there's so many tools that we have today that we didn't have 20 years ago. And so that includes data, sales intelligence, it includes you need to have some sort of sales automation to do this. You cannot do it on an Excel spreadsheet. You absolutely need to have some kind of sales automation. We use a dialer and uh, the dialer doubles the call volume at a minimum because it allows you to pre-record and drop a voicemail. So there are all these tools that are available that weren't available before and they just make you uh, 
more efficient. So use them. Absolutely. That's what this show is about, right? Yeah. Being more efficient and and absolutely those tools are key. Are there some tools that you want to mention that you think are excellent tools? Well, we use contact science and that is actually a tool. It's not CRM. It is specifically for telephone prospecting appointment setting. Uh-huh. Um, so I do recommend contact science. You reach out to contact science, tell them the queen sent you because they give my, my folks a discount. Fantastic. Um, and we also use a dialer by electronic voice. And uh, same thing, if you reach out to them, they take very good care of my folks. So let them know the queen sent you. That's what we use. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here. Let's share with everybody the, uh, the free gifts that you have available for them and where they can go get them. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the first gift for those of you uh, that are prospecting or should be prospecting and would like to start, I have uh, my cold calling survival guide. And the subtitle is start setting appointments in the next 24 hours. So this guide is going to give you a step-by-step system that you can start to implement to start setting appointments in the next 24 hours. Great. Um, Now, for our listeners, our watchers, people that are tuning in, that if you manage salespeople, I have a practical guide to getting sales teams to prospect. Because one of the things that I hear all the time from managers is, how do I get them to prospect? (laughs) So... This guide is going to give you a very, I call it a practical guide. It's very practical, easy to implement steps, things that you can put in place to increase the effectiveness and the efficiency of your team if you need them to be prospecting. Um, And this isn't a gift, but if you'd like to talk to me, uh, you can, my website is coldcallingresults.com, but I am a phone person. So you could actually call me. 866-220-4242. And you'll pick up the phone? Uh, I will either pick up the phone or leave me a message and I'll call you back. I am a phone person. Fantastic. And there are phone people. I'm a phone person too. I pick up my phone. People call me, I pick up my phone. Great. Well, thank you, Wendy, so much for sharing these tips. And I love the connection with what you learn through ballet and how that crosses over into the business world. Absolutely. Warm up, rehearse, perform. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for being here and taking away some of these key tips. Remember that, you know, this is applicable for cold calling, but it's also applicable for, this is about communication. You heard Wendy say it earlier. So it's not just for cold calling. It can be for almost any conversation, any difficult conversation you probably want to do those three things too. Warm up, rehearse, right? And then perform. So these are really valuable tips. Thank you so much, Wendy. And thank you all. My name is Penny Zanker and I'll see you in the next episode. This is Take Back Time. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.